Hey everybody, this is Captain Kimo, and in this video I am going to show you how to use Photomatix to create an HDR image with Tone Compressor. Now the photo we're going to use to create this HDR image, this photo is not my photo, this was uh, sent to me by someone from Facebook, I believe his name is Jorn Bittner. Uh, don't really know how to pronounce it but this is his photo so I'm just processing it. Uh, this is the photo we're going to be using here. This, uh, this is the evenly exposed image. This is the underexposed image. And this is the overexposed image. Now we're going to take all that, we're going to create this HDR image and then we're going to process it in Photoshop Elements and Photoshop Lightroom to create this image. So right now we have our Photomatix window open. I am going to drag and drop the three exposures that we're going to use for this tutorial right into the Photomatix window and then I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click OK again and then go through the pre-processing options. I'm just going to leave Align Source Images unchecked. Ghosting I'm going to leave unchecked. It doesn't look like there's any ghosting in the photo. Um, reduce Noise I am going to leave checked and I'm going to leave a reduce chromatic aberration checked. With that said I'm going to click OK and let Photomatix process the photo. Here we are in our tone mapping window and we have enhancer default selected. Now we're going to be using tone compressor so I will start with either compressor default or the compressor deep. Uh, I like the compressor deep so I'm going to start from there now I'm going to close the preset window and then I will make this photo a little bigger so you can see it a little better you can see already with tone compressor the saturation in our highlights is a lot better than the uh, regular exposure and what I want to do is I want to get more of that but keep the uh, silhouettes in the tree so we're gonna play around with uh, the settings or the sliders and see what else we can do with this image. So we're gonna start with brightness. Uh, brightness will brighten your image so if you go all the way to the right you'll brighten up the image. Now you'll see the the foreground detail in our tree but I don't want that. I, I want to keep it like a silhouette so I'm gonna bring it back down um, and just maybe even all the way and kind of so I can get the colors in the sky there. Our next slider is tonal range compression. What tonal range compression does is it darkens or lightens up the image like brightness. Only with tonal range, range compression it only affects the, the saturated areas of the photo. So if I were to move it down all the highlights will get uh, desaturated and just a little darker and if I were to move it all the way to the right it'll get brighter and the colors will come out a little more in the uh, the sky. But note with tone range compression that the shadows stay black. So we're gonna play around with this and I kinda like it where it was so we're gonna drop it right around there. Uh, okay. I think I like it right around 5 so we'll leave it right there. And next we have contrast adaptation. Uh, what I like to think of uh, this slider is that it's kind of like the fill. So if I were to bring it down, it darkens up the overall image. And then if I were to bring it up, it brings out the image in the uh, midtones or the fill. See, right around here is where I'm looking at for this uh, this specific uh, slider here. If I were to bring it down right to where it was earlier, which is right about 3, it it's a little uh, dark. I kind of want to bring that out a little bit. So we'll just bring that slider all the way up. So that looks good. I, I wouldn't mind it being a little brighter, but we'll do that in Photoshop. So the next slider is white point. You're pretty much bringing out the white points in your area or bringing up the, the white areas of your photo. So if I were to bring it to the right, it'll brighten up the sky, which is where all the white point is. So I don't want any brightness in my white point. I'm just going to leave it down. Uh, black point is going to darken up all the the black areas of the shadow of your image. So if you bring it all the way to the right, it'll make the image darker. And I kind of like it darker, so we'll bring it back down, kind of play around with it and, until we get it to where I like. So right about there looks good. 
and next we have temperature temperature is if you want it cooler you bring it all the way to the left and if you want it warmer you bring it to the right I I kinda like it warmer so I'm gonna play around with it right around the right area of this slider here um, cooler is actually pretty cool but we're gonna keep it warm for this photo so not not that warm but let's maybe around six looks good so our last slider for tone compressor is saturation now saturation is pretty obvious if I bring it down to the left it takes away all the color if I increase it to the right it boosts up the color now saturation here for tone compressor isn't as uh, good as detail enhancer so usually I leave it around zero I really don't adjust it but for this photo I'm just gonna bring it up maybe about a couple notches so yeah right around two looks pretty good well that's it for this image I'm just gonna go ahead and hit process and then we'll take the image into Photoshop and start doing some post-processing to the photo okay so we have our photo open in Photoshop elements what I'm gonna do is I'm going to brighten up the foreground here or right around this area of the image um, I'm gonna do an easy I'm gonna duplicate the layer and then I'm going to use fill color to bring it out just a little bit and then mask the area I'll show you in a little bit but I can do this in Lightroom if I wanted but part of my um, my workflow involves Photoshop so I take it into Photoshop first and then once I do that I'll do whatever needs to be done in Photoshop and then I'll take it into Lightroom it's just part of my workflow and I like to stick to what I know and what I do and what I get the best results from so let's go ahead and start okay so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, duplicate this background layer you can right click right on the layer and click on duplicate hit OK and it'll duplicate the layer and then what I'm going to do is go into the quick mode here and then go into my I'm gonna close this out and go into my shadows in the shadows I'm going to just bring it up a little bit just to bring out the foreground right here now you can do this in regular version of Photoshop using using image and I believe it's edit and shadow and highlights or highlight and shadows the same thing you just go into your shadows and you just bring it up so I'm done here I'm just gonna go right back into the full mode and you can see here uh, that our image is a little brighter right in the the fill area okay so next what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a layer mask right into the fill area and then I'm gonna click on the layer mask I'm gonna click control I or command I on a Mac and make everything invisible on this layer now I'm gonna take my paintbrush tool which and then I'm going to make sure it is white at about 50 percent and let's make the paintbrush a little bigger here and we're just going to paint back in this area of the image missed a little bit here or I went a little too far here let me go back to black right here so I can erase that All right and that looks good I think I'm, I'm done now let's just fine-tune it a tad bit here let's go in there and and just start removing some of the um, areas where I kinda went a little, a little too far there right, so that looks that looks pretty good let me go out here and then you can see the uh, the before and the after layer mask a lot nicer you, kinda your eye draws or the photo by doing this your your eye goes right right around to here which is kinda what what I was looking for and that that's that's pretty much it for 
for Photoshop. I'm going to save it and then I'm going to take it to Lightroom and start doing my my color adjustments. Okay, so we imported our photo into Lightroom. We have our develop module open. I'm just going to close this out so we can get a bigger a better view of the image. And then I'm going to start working down working my way down the sliders here. So let's start with temperature. I am going to play around with it see where I like it. I think I like it warmer like I said before. I'm going to just make it a little a little more like a golden um, a golden misty morning so we'll play around with it until we get it just right. I don't want it too too warm but just enough. Alright so let's work with the tint. Okay so I kinda like it a little more yellowish so I'll bring it out a little bit just just a little and then exposure we'll play around with that tad okay I'll, I'll bring my exposure down a notch and then bring up the fill a little bit and then maybe use the recovery light to bring bring down the saturation in the sky and then we'll go into well we don't need to use any black I think it's, it's dark enough brightness I'm probably gonna wanna brighten it up a little bit I know I brought down the exposure only to brighten it up don't make any sense does it but I kinda like bringing my exposure down and bringing the brightness up contrast we will bring it up a tad just to add, add a little more contrast to the image where it will make the shadows darker and the highlights brighter and clarity will add a little clarity to the photo vibrance let's bring it up a tad I, I like to bring up my vibrance I don't like to do saturation but vibrance is good uh, that looks that's good for the basic stuff so I'm gonna close this out okay so next I am going to go straight to effects and add a little vignette to the image um, I kind of like to add a vignette to the image to draw the eye to the center. Uh, it's good also to to go straight if you're going to add a vignette, just to do it right away. So then you kind of can make the adjustments as you're doing them, make them uh, make them to cater to the vignette. And that looks good. Now we'll close this out. What I'm going to do next is get my gradient tool here and kind of I want to kind of darken up the sky a little bit. So I'm going to kind of bring it down a tad and bring up bring down my exposure a little bit here. And maybe even add a little bit of a golden hue to the uh the gradient map. And just play around with the uh, setting here a little bit. Okay, so that looks that looks good. Let's let's kind of see where we are now. This is the uh, this is the after. So and this is before, and then this is after. Okay, so the image looks good right now. I think the last thing I'm going to do is do a little split toning. So I'm gonna give my highlights a little bit of a golden, more of a golden hue to it, and then a the shadows I'm gonna give it a little more cooler tones to it. Um, let's go back there. Oh, what's going on here? So let's go ahead and just give it some cooler tone here, and then and then play around with the uh, the balance here. I'll maybe bright make it a little warmer and then get the shadows just a little cooler alright so let's see before and after so this is before this is after it looks good but I, I think I'm gonna go back to basics and just play around with it a little more here and maybe bring the fill up even more I'm 
thinking about bringing the contrast down just a tad. No, I, no, I like it up. Maybe bring the brightness down a tad. All right, so let's see what we got here before and after. Okay, so I've decided I like the image the way it is right now. I can go on forever trying to post process the image just right, but uh, I think right now there's really no point in going any further. So we're just going to go ahead and stop right here, and then I'll show you the before and after and all the three exposures. So here we have the original exposure, and here is the under exposure and the overexposure and then we have our HDR image this is the one we used uh, we tone map using tone compressor and then here is the final image that we processed using Photoshop elements and Lightroom well that is it for this video don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to visit CaptainChemo.com I have a ton of more stuff over there on HDR photography and you can see my latest HDR photos and if you want to learn more about HDR more advanced stuff I do have an ebook membership that you can purchase I plan on including videos to that membership as soon as I get more comfortable doing these uh, videos for YouTube so until next time this is Captain Chemo signing out